But we welcome you this morning, and we've got a lot to pray about this morning. And uh, so let's go to the prayer list. Continue praying for Sister Cheryl. Continue praying for Sister Fran. She's, uh, she had a uh, uh, grand, grandkids day today, so she said, uh, I, I won't be able to make it. And I said, well, we'll just have to shut down the church. And, <laughs> but uh, we miss her. Uh, good to see Sister Myra. Let's continue praying for her. Amen. Continue praying for Sister Kathy. Continue praying for Sister Colleen and her daughter Elizabeth. Continue praying for Sister Sandy. Sister Sandy went through a terrible fall and her husband and her family. Good to see Sister Shannon. Continue praying for her. Sister Garnett's in the hospital. Uh, they said that she may have Bell palsy. We didn't know what that was, but yeah. part of your face, your yeah, your mouth will go uh, droop. And uh, so uh, we just continue praying for her. Continue praying for Brother Dale. Good to see Brother Dale. Continue praying for Sister Kathy down there. Uh, and uh, Solid Foundation at Marion Church. She called uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, we hadn't been down there for a couple of weeks because there's just so much going on with us. And uh, she just wanted to check up on us. Tell us that she missed us. She looks forward to seeing us on Sunday nights when we go down there. So uh, continue praying for her. Continue praying for Brother Bob's co-worker's brother. Amen. That God will continue to strengthen him and his co-worker's son, Jake. Uh, pray for Brother Tim's family, Brother Vaughn's cousins and uh, brother Salvation, Brother Steve, pray for him. Brother Owen, you know, pray for him. He was really down. He was, uh, uh, he put on the, the thing here, I saw it, where he hasn't been feeling good, and uh, he said he gets real lightheaded. Yeah. And he says, I, I, I'm too young for this. Yeah. So let's be praying for him, that God will move. Pray for Brother Randy, that God will move and touch his body. Uh, let's continue praying for Sister Linda's brother and their daughter Vicki and uh, great nephews, girlfriends, unborn babies. Uh, there's a situation there with the, she's having twins, correct? Right. And she's having twins and uh, there's some things there that the, the dad uh, uh, said he might do if something happens. So we're going to pray and believe that these babies, uh, they, they're not going to be born until what? December? December. So Let's continue praying for them, that God will move upon them. Dawson's heart, young boy with cancer, those affected by the hurricane, let's continue praying for that. Uh, Sister Lydia and her husband Todd, he had surgery again, so let's continue praying for that. Pray for salvation for him. Brother Tom, down in Texas, his daughter Tricia and, and daughter-in-law, uh, our daughter uh, Elizabeth, so continue praying for them. Uh, Continue praying for Marcus, Sister Althea's grandson. Uh, they may have to go into another surgery on him yet, on his hand. Let's pray for, uh, good to see Miley here, Miss Lori, Evie, Marty. Let's continue praying for them, Matthew, Solomon, the whole family. Uh, continue praying for Israel and Jerusalem. Folks, we need to bring them up, lift them up. We need to continue praying for our nation, our church, public schools, President Trump, upcoming election. Amen. Pray for them. I pray that everything is going to go out. You know, I'm not here to publish lies, but, uh, you know, uh, I believe, uh, you know, if we don't get out, you need to get out both. Yes. I saw a little bit of the thing yesterday. Uh, you know, Elon Musk was there with uh, President Trump, and he said something. He said, this could be the last election if we don't get out both. This could be the last election. And uh, if, if they have their way, they'll shut us down. They'll shut down, shut everything down, folks. Yeah. So uh, he was telling you, get out and tell your neighbors and people you don't know. Tell them to vote. Get out and vote. So uh, we need to do that. Pray for all of our unsaved children. Amen. We've all got unsaved children this morning. Any spoken requests? Yes. Uh, Miller Noah came a couple services. He's buying a house right south of town here. Right out of the hood. a mile town. Oh, okay. Well, oh, Tim. Yeah, I'm praying for my cousin. His his father. He's taking a load of water down to North Carolina. Hempy, uh, hempy uh, water here. Right. They've donated enough to fill up a 24 foot trailer and that big van he's got. So he's taking down, taking that down. He's leaving this morning for North Carolina. All right. A place down there where they haven't had water. All right, let's pray for that down there, folks, because I know uh, 
Sister Kathy had posted and, and sent word out that they got a whole bunch of donation from Walmart, t-shirts and underwear that they're packing up and, and getting it set down there too. Sister Colleen? It was to echo what you all are saying about the whole East Coast there, those that were affected. Yes. The things that we're seeing that the government's not helping. And yes, they're, they're, they're not helping. Uh, apparently they took everything, the money that from yeah. FEMA. Yeah. And it's gone. It it's gone. They give it to the, the what? Migrants. The migrants. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, yeah. there's no money for the FEMA yeah. to help these people because they're helping the migrants. Yeah. Wow. They stole the money. And they said, I heard also that they took it from the, the veterans, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, and folks, we are living in a cruel world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. So. Uh, remember these requests. Pray for those that are able to send stuff down there, take water down, or whatever down there to these folks, because help build and all those. yes, help build and uh, get it back up. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's the worst it's ever been, and it's sad that we can't can't they can't get no help from our government, yeah. and, and it's sad. No, so. Yeah, so far they, so far I've heard there's 230 that are possibly dead, and they still got a lot of them missing. They can't find them. Nobody there to look for them. They're probably buried underneath mud and stuff. Who knows? So you know, we need to pray, folks. Pray for them. Yeah, I actually ought to pray for you know God's will for this election. Yes. And whatever the darkness does, and the darkness says it'll bring it to light. Amen. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, like I said, it will not have another chance. Yep. So, you know, get out and vote, folks. Get out and vote. And uh, we'll just pray and believe that. Amen. Anybody else this morning? All right. We're going to pray over this prayer list. And I got a prayer cloth here that we're going to pray over also. And we're going to give this to anybody else need a prayer cloth? We're going to give this to Sister Althea to give to Marcus. Anybody else want one? Yes. You want one? You want one? I've been talking to this girl, Lord, and she needs to be medicated. She's been seeking to go to church and stuff. And her mom and I just couldn't believe it. And I've been talking to her and I'm just praying with her and stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, anybody else? I got three here. All right. Let's pray together. Raise your hands and join with us in prayer. Heavenly <laughs> Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know every need that's been spoken this morning. You know the need of those folks down in the East Coast, dear Lord, has been affected with this hurricane, dear God. Lord, that help will get to them, dear God, some way, somehow. And Lord, we ask you to heal those, dear God, that uh, needs a healing this morning. Your sister Garden in the hospital. The Lord needs a healing this morning. Your sister Sandy, sister Myra, and others, dear God, that's here this morning, Brother Steve. And Lord, we're believing this morning, dear God. Lord, be with those that are traveling down there to help these folks. Lord, be with them. Watch over them, dear God. Save our unsaved children, dear Lord. Save our siblings, dear God. Save this morning, dear Lord, and move mightily. Give the hearts of those, dear God, that's left the church. Now, Lord, that they'll come back and be with us. And, Lord, we ask you to send in those that are hungry. Send in those that are looking for a church. Lord, we're not here to steal, take from other churches. Lord, but we're here to open the doors for the lost to come in, for those that are hungry to come in, those that desire to hear the truth to come in. And, Lord, we give you praise. We give you the glory right now for it. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand up of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. I believe that there's no healing in this prayer call. But the woman said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I would be made whole. Amen. And we're going to believe that this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to believe that this morning. As we get started, uh, we're going today at noon for Charles McDonald's birthday. Her ex-wife, her husband's dying.
pray that God will give the words to Sister Sandy. Amen. To speak to this young man. Yes, amen. He may be soft in his heart. You know, he may, uh, she may be, or he may be the only Bible that he reads is from what the words of what God gives Sister Sandy. Yes. So, you know, folks, there's a lot of people out there that are lost True. and they need Jesus. True. We're not going to be able to reach everybody, but we can reach them if we just talk to them and tell them that Jesus loves them. That's all you got to do is just tell them Jesus loves you. Amen. And, you know, you can accept him today as your Lord and Savior. Amen. So let's sing this morning. Come on, sister. Let it help us out. Amen. How are you glad? Amen. That for Calvary. Amen. I thank God every day that Jesus paid a great price on that cross of Calvary. Amen. Let's sing. Well, years I spent
was free. I don't know about you, but I like free things. Come on, I love free things. Amen. When it comes free, I, I'll take it. Amen. Uh, I've said it, and I've said it again, and I'll say it again this morning. I'm done. We're done with Sister Angela. I'm done with Rock Sales. Uh, we don't want your stuff. If you give it, and it's a big stuff. I'll put it on marketplace to try to sell it. But I'm done with it. But, you know, if it's a longer road and I can make some money off of it, I'll pick it up. Come on. And I'll put it on marketplace. Amen. I had something on there the other day, and, uh, and a lady uh, contacted me and said, we, we really want it. And I said, you want both of them? She goes, well, you got both of them for sale at the same price. I said, yeah, you can take both of them. I don't want them no more. Take them. So, you know, I thank God that God is still answering prayers. Amen, God. Amen. We pray all the time. Say, Lord, that stuff was on there. We're going to believe that you're going to sell for us. Amen. God is an all-time God. He's an all Come on, church. I said, he's an all-time God. And I thank God for his mercy. And I thank God that my chains were broken one day when I say yes to Jesus. Amen. So let's worship the Lord and say yes. this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. We worship you this morning, the God of Spirit and the truth.
Amen. We want to thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. We want to recognize a beautiful couple this morning that's going to have an anniversary. Uh, the Thursday, am I correct? Thursday. Amen. Brother Tim Stan and Sister Myra Stan. Amen. Continue praying for Sister Myra that she continues to put up with Brother Tim. Just kidding. Amen. We've, we've uh, grown fond with these uh, fine folks, and uh, we, we sure thank God for God's sending them in our way years ago, and uh, you know, they got an anniversary Thursday, so let's sing a happy early anniversary to them. Happy anniversary. Other. And he debated 
well, several, one of them just texted me or sent me a message to Victory and Cost Ministries. It's probably up on the on the thing back here, but uh, Brother Ed's still coughing and Sister Linda's still coughing. And they had COVID here a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, and uh, we were hoping that maybe we'd see them tonight, but uh, they're not feeling good, so they asked for prayer. So I'm going to ask you if you just raise your hands this morning and, and, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you know the need of Brother Ed and Sister Linda this morning. Lord, we bring them before you again, dear God, asking you to touch and heal their bodies, dear Lord. Lord, this sickness has come upon them. We take authority over it. You said we can speak unto that mountain, and it shall be removed. We're speaking unto that sickness, dear Lord. Heal my brother, heal my sister, dear Lord. God, that they'll be able to get back in the church, dear Lord. And God, we just ask you to just to move this morning, dear Lord, in a mighty way upon their bodies. And we give you praise, we give you glory for it already. We thank you for it all right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Sister Linda, you got a song this morning. Come and bless us, would you please? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God in spirit. All the time. Absolutely. As thank you and praise you for Calvary. And I thank the Father for sending his son. Yes.
Amen. The first thing, first song we sang was "Please Tell Me Again," and, and we sang for almost an hour down there. We never got invited back though. But we told them about Jesus. Praise God. Yeah. There were about I don't know. There were probably three hundred people there. They, I don't know what they was expecting, but they got the gospel that night. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're, we, you know, we're not. Yes. Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. But we're not. Uh, you know, we're not here to entertain. Amen. There's enough churches out there that entertain. Amen. There's enough gospel singers out there. That's all they do is entertain. And uh, but you know. God, God rewards those that are faithful to him, that are not doing it to, not to me, and I'm going to bring this out a little bit, uh, man-pleasers, you know, there's a lot of people that are man-pleasers, there's only one man I'm going to please, and that's God, and he's the only one I want to please, is God, amen, so we just thank the Lord for that, amen, amen, what God is doing, everybody got one? I think so. All right. There must have been something I missed back here. <laughs> I don't know, somebody handed me something this morning and I had to throw it back and, and put sanitizer on my hand to get rid of that. <laughs> I had to get rid of it. You know. uh, some things are free, but I don't want some things that are free. <laughs> somebody wanted me to hang it on, but there's going to hang it on Brother Bond's tree, and it's an artificial, but it'll catch on fire, he said. It'll burn up. But the Bible says, for I have received, in 1 yes. Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, for I have received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Let us break and eat it together this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. We're doing it for you, remembering you. Verse 25 says, And after the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, and remember to me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us drink it together this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a wonderful hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so good to us, folks. He is so good to us. Amen. I'm going to sing a song this morning before we get into the taking up the offering. Hallelujah. You know, I just want to thank the Lord every day for who he is, what he's done, what he's going to do. Amen. He's been so good to us, folks. The, the name of this song is Let Me Thank You Again. Amen. When well, let me thank you again.
God is ever saying that, Brother Bob. Many times I've heard you get up and testify what God has brought you from. You know, what you used to be like. Amen. You know, I'm not bringing up the past. The past is gone. Nope. Amen. The chains were broken. But I, when we were seeing that, I thought the, the testimony that you had gave many different times what God has brought you from. Amen. I don't know about you, but I thank God that he saved my soul. Amen. And he brought me out of those pits of hell. Amen. Amen. Set my feet upon a solid rock. Amen. Wasted years. I don't know about you, but we wasted so many years. Let's receive your tithes and offerings. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. We thank you for those that are already made. Give the offering this morning. We just thank you. Heavenly Father, we give you all praise. We give you glory. We thank you again, dear Lord, for saving our souls. Yes. We thank you again this morning for your, your healing virtue. Yes. We thank you again for your for the, uh, the outpouring of the Holy yes. Ghost upon our lives. And, and Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. And Lord, we thank you again for this church, these fine folks, and every dollar that comes in. Dear Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you ever dropped in, drop it in. The Lord will bless you. If you can't get up here, wave it. Somebody will get it for you and take it up here. Amen. He's coming back on a silver cloud of glory. Amen. Sister, let me sing in this song. He's we'll passing by. He's coming back, church. Amen. When he's coming back. coming back. Amen. I don't know about you, but he's coming back, church. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Ready or not, he's coming Amen. back. I was kid, Brother Bond, this morning, he said he couldn't see the, the clock to see what time it was. I said, Jesus said, you didn't, we didn't, don't need to know the time. Just be ready. Amen. Just be ready. Amen. So I believe he's coming back. Yes, he is. It could Amen. be today. Come on, church. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. That's right. We are not guaranteed that he promised that he'd come back and be with us. Amen. To take us home to be with you. got your Bibles, turn with me if you went into the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 1. And I want to read verses uh, 6 through 12 this morning. Hallelujah. Give you time to get there. Galatians chapter 1. Let's continue praying for our prayer list. Amen. God will intervene and touch and save and heal. Amen. The Bible reads in Galatians chapter 1, starting with the sixth verse. The Apostle Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon 
removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ but to another gospel. Which is not another, but there be some that troubled you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so shall I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Yeah. For do I now persuade men, or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word is already anointed. And I ask you this morning, dear Lord, to help me. Dear Lord, to bring across your word. Lord, that we understand what the Holy Spirit was saying to the Apostle Paul. And God, that we receive it. And those out there watching, Lord, that will be watching, that they'll receive it also. And Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory this morning. Let your will be done. Jesus name we pray and everybody said amen, amen and amen we all know what Apostle Paul was talking about another gospel was preached by people who wanted the Gentile believers to follow Jewish laws to obtain salvation those who claimed this different gospel between that faith in Christ was not enough to be saved, a person must also follow the Jewish laws and their customs, especially the right of circumcision. This message that Paul gave undermined the truth. The truth here, the, 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 this message undermined the truth of the good, not, good news that salvation is a gift, not a reward of certain works. Jesus Christ has made this yet available to all people. Amen. Not just to Jews. Amen. Right. Amen. Beware of people. Come on. Beware of people who say that we need to do more. Come on now. They believe in Christ to be saved. Amen. When people set up additional requirements for salvation... They deny the power yes. of Christ's death on the cross. Yeah. We are living today, church, in the worst times of if our ancestors that are gone on to be with the Lord could even hear and see what's going on today in the world. Yeah. What's going on in the in the government? What's going on in the churches today? I know it was bad then, but the, it's worse today. Yeah. Amen. To hear what's being said behind the pulpit. To hear and be, hear what's being preached to, to people, you know. Amen. They're trying to tell you that there's another way. Right. There's another way to get to the heavens. There's another way to get to Jesus. Right. Uh, the title of this message is, there is no other gospel. No other. There's only one gospel, and that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. And him crucified. Amen. No matter who is behind the pulpit. Amen. I, I just can't bring in anybody. That's right. Amen. And I, I, you know, we're going to share with Sister Kathy. I just can't go to churches and, 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 and hear somebody. Sister Angela and I have decided we'll just stay home. And if we can hear what they got to say and agree with it, then maybe the next time. Amen. I'm not going to go and support something that I don't believe in. Come on. I know what I believe in. Amen. And I know what was been, what's being preached in this pulpit. Amen. From the brothers and sisters. Amen. The pre 
preaching here, amen, and that's why I allow them to preach. Amen, church, I'm here to tell you, they bring in everybody and every other doctor that they want to bring in to preach. And so what? I wonder why the people are so confused. They, 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 they hear one thing from this and hear another thing from this, and they don't know which way to turn. We are living in the last days. Amen. That's why it's very important that we as Christians get out and vote. Amen. Amen. It's about time for the church to stand up yeah. and be the church. Amen. Yeah. Paul says, I marvel, I marvel that you are soon re removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. What Paul does here is he returns to find so quickly that the Galatians were in the process of deserting the gospel of Jesus Christ. This explains Paul's urgency as he sought to turn them back before they were established in the air. Amen. It's time the church, if we hear something and it don't line up in the word of God, we must speak our truth. It's just an oh, okay, okay. No, if it's wrong, it don't line up in this. Amen. It's another gospel. To take up a different gospel, these Galatians had to depart from that, from what they had known and experienced. We learn from the from that what the uh, how quickly that much damage, uh -huh. much damage can be done by false teaching. Right. The Galatians were rapidly turning away from Paul and his teaching of grace uh -huh. to the Judaizers with their teaching of works. Yeah. When Paul said, "Remove from him." refers to Jesus Christ. Yeah. The idea is if they continued, if they continued in this direction, church, they would be removed from the Lord and their salvation. In other words, they would lose their souls. Uh -huh. Removed from him is the most awful, come on, listen to me, is the most awful uh, thing that one could ever know. To be removed from him. First of all, they have to be with Christ. Hello? Before they can be removed. Come on. You got to be with him before you can be removed from him. Amen. Paul came in. He was preaching the truth. Amen. That's why it's very important that we know the truth. Amen. That we don't agree with every fly by Jack. Preaching that comes in here or goes in from everywhere and preaches the word. We gotta know what thus saith the Lord says. Yes. Amen. Amen. Here they were, they, they had received what Paul had gave them. And all of a sudden you turned your back, the Judaizers had come in. They snuck in. Come on, I don't want to get ahead of myself. They came in. So now they're being removed. Come on, church. Amen. They had to have the truth. Before you can be removed from it. Peter said, this is what Peter said. 2 Peter 2.21. For it had better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment and deliver it unto them. It's best not to know the truth. Come on. Then to know the truth and to depart from it. Yeah. Amen. Uh, to another gospel. He said unto another gospel, presents that which destroys the grace of God. Yeah. Another gospel is claimed to be like the gospel, and yet it was essentially unlike the plan which Paul had presented as constituting the true gospel. See, they like to sugarcoat it. Amen. They'll come in and they'll try to sugarcoat it. I, like I said, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. But they'll try to come in and uh, try to turn you around from the truth. Uh -huh. Church, it's very important. We know the truth. Right. Amen. Because if the government uh, would have their way, it shut us down. It tried to take the word from us this year. That's why you got to get this and start eating it and get it down inside of your stomach and your mind and your soul so you'll know the truth. Yeah. 
Amen. That when somebody says something, yeah. amen, he said in verse 7, he said, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Paul said, which is not another. Boy, that's strong. Presents the fact that Satan's aim is not so much to deny the gospel as to corrupt it. In nature, there cannot be two gospels. Huh? Either men can save themselves by perfect obedience, or they cannot. If they cannot, then their reliance must be placed on something other than themselves. I can't save myself. No. Amen. I thank God for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. That I gave him. I thank God that my chains were broken by the steam. Amen. Amen. I'm not the same person that I used to be. Amen. The gospel is good news. Amen. 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 How can that be good news? When Paul speaks of the Galatians turning to another gospel. He means that they were turning to a gospel that is false in its doctrine. It is not only different in character from the gospel when he preached to, to the Galatians, but it is different in a bad sense. The idea was something cannot be evil as this false gospel is, and yet at the same time be the message of good news. Right. For first, a salvation by works yeah. message is no good news to a lost right. sinner. Yeah. The Bible says in Titus 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to the mercy, his mercy, he saved us. Right. Second, if salvation were by good works, one would not know how many good works a person must do to be saved. Right. And after being saved, to keep saved. Huh? Amen. If it's by works, how many are you going to do? <coughs> Am I not the answer? No. How many are you going to do to keep saved? It's not by good works, church. The gospel is good news. It is not only different in character from the good gospel. Amen. No one can have any assurance of acceptance with God or security and salvation from such teaching. Come on. They're, they're out there teaching you, oh, you can do this. Once saved, always saved. No. You can stay saved, or you can backslide. In fact, this is actually the reason, and my wife can verify this, and some of you may also, that the Catholics have invented purgatory. A place, incidentally, which does not exist. Their gospel is a gospel of good works. And they never quite know how many good works are enough, so they teach that, per that the person must go to purgatory to be made ready for heaven. This false gospel is not only different in kind, in fact, it is not a gospel at all. There can be only one message of good news. And that is the message of faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thus the Galatians, the Galatians here, they were turning to an opposition gospel, di diametrical opposed to Paul's message of grace. To receive another so-called gospel is to embrace a totally different message which comes from a spirit other than the Holy Spirit. The Galatians were exchanging their liberty for bondage. That's what a false doctrine will do. If you will heed to it, listen to it, accept it, amen, you lose, you're losing. Amen, you're going from liberty and you're going to bondage. 
And sadly, there's a lot of people today sitting in the church world, uh, amen, have left liberty and they accepted bondage. Why? Because there's another gospel has come in and they have accepted it. Right. The word, when he said pervert, Paul said there, he said, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. The word pervert means to reverse, to change, to opposition, to turn about. The purpose of the Judaizers was to so change the gospel of grace, which Paul preached, that it would be the reverse of what it was, a message of salvation by good works instead of a message of salvation offered, offered free in answer to faith. Like I said earlier, I don't know about you, but I love free stuff. Huh? And God gave us the greatest free gift of all. Amen. Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And it's all by faith. Sister Sandy, believing in him. And accepting him as our Lord and Savior. Yes, amen. Amen. And learning of him. Let the Holy Ghost teach us things that we don't know. They were mixing, the, the Judaizers were mixing law and grace. Paul said in Romans 11 and 6, if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be by works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Huh? You can work all you want. Huh? Brother Dale, you can work all you want trying to find salvation. And you'll keep working, you'll keep working, and you won't find it. It's time that we just stop and stand still and say, Lord, I believe in you. Amen. And I don't have to work for my salvation. It's all my faith and trusting and believing in him. Amen. Come on. They want to tell you you got to do this. The church world today says you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do that. That's a flat lie out of hell. All you got to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. Right. Believe in him and receive him as, as your Savior and trust in him and continue to follow in him. Yeah. Brother Tom preached a wonderful message a, a few years ago over to Philly, and he preached a year uh, just a, a couple years ago or whatever it was. Amen. That we must have a relationship with Christ yeah. instead of having religion. Amen. There's too many people today in the church world have religion, but you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ and know who He is. Amen. He is our Lord and Savior. He said, Paul said, but though we, he gets strong, folks. He gets strong here. But he says, but though we are an angel from heaven. Preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. When Paul said, but though we, meaning his associates with himself, Barnabas, Silas, and Timothy, and others, he said, who have combined with him in the preaching of the gospel, he wants to show the Galatians that the controversy is not between one teacher or another, but between truth and error. Come on. The, the preaching is not between Brother Vaughn and I, Brother Sister Myra and I, Brother Bob and I, or my wife and I. It's between truth and error. Right. Amen. Come on. Paul brought in the truth. Amen. And the Judaizers came in behind him trying to bring in air. you got to do this, amen, to be saved. No, you don't, church. Amen. Come on. You don't have to give $100 to the church. You don't have to. All these preachers will say, if you give me $1,000, amen, I'll pray and everything will be all right with you. That's a lie from hell. You just gave up $1,000. If you've got that kind of money, give it to me. <laughs> huh? I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to tell you everything's going to be all right. I'm going to tell you everything's going to be wrong. 
But if you want to give me a thousand, go ahead. Paul was saying here in verse 9, if we or they preach anything, any system of doctrines, any slight deviation from the real and the true, other than simply gospel Jesus Christ, all must be forsaken. Amen. 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 Paul, in fact, is saying, any other doctrine, any than that, which is proclaimed in the Bible about justification, is to be rejected and treated with hatred, and no matter what the rank, talent, or forceful of him who defines it, the fact is, they must answer to God. Amen. So Paul said, let him be accursed. Let him be damned. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's saying. In other words, he shall be accursed of God and may be lost. Yeah. There's a law. My heart goes out for these preachers that are standing behind the television with thousands of people. Amen. They're preaching lost, false doctrine to them. Amen. There are a curse, church. We've got to pray that God gets a hold of their heart and they turn about and start preaching the truth to them. Amen. You've heard the story, many of you have you heard, and I, I don't know if, it, if it'll happen. I don't know. But there'll be a lot of people in hell, and there'll be preachers in hell. And they'll come up to him and say, why didn't you tell me the truth? Huh? You know, I'm not sticking up with the preachers. But we got to do our part too. If what he says, we need to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And if it don't line up, All right now. then we need to get out of there. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Getting there, done that. If it ain't lining up with the word of God, Brother Steve, we need to get out of there. They can't always go out and point the finger at the preacher. You got to do your part. Right. You got to let the convicting power of the Holy Ghost convict you and get a hold of you. Say that's not ain't right here. What that preacher said ain't right. right. And you go and search it. Come on, right. Amen. I had, I ain't gonna bring up the past, but there was a man I, we had preached at one time, and I disagree with him. And I talked to him after church, and that was wrong. That was wrong. Amen. You know what? He'll never preach again. Here. It's wrong. we got to know the word. Right. Huh? And if the word, we don't know the word, then we're going to agree to everything that somebody says. Come on, church. Search out. Search your own soul. Come on. Search it out. Make sure what you're hearing is the truth. We must remember that the Holy Spirit is speaking through Paul. And he, it's bad enough he says it in verse 8, but to repeat himself again. Verse 9, he said, and we said before, so I say again. In other words, you didn't hear me the first time. If any man preach any other gospel unto them, that you have received, let him be cursed. That's right. Now, verse 9 differs from verse 8 in that identical pronoun anyone is used instead of the definite subject Paul or any angel. Also in verse 8, the possibility is more than remote. If we should, while here the construction's Suggest that such is being taken place if anyone is. So he said before, if we should. Now he's repeating and saying, if anyone is. Come on. There were not only to be held accursed, these false teachers, therefore, because Paul so declared, but because they preached what the Galatians himself knew to be false. Amen. And what was contrary to that when they had themselves professed to be true? Come on. Come on. 
as God's judgment will fall on people who prevent the gospel, will also fall on those who take from or add to God's written word. Revelation 22, 18, 19 says, For I testify unto every man that hear these words of the prophecy of, the, of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the pledge that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the word of this book of this prophecy, God shall wipe him forth out of the book of the life and out of the holy city and from those things which are written in this book. In other words, church, if they're preaching, as I said earlier, they're preaching a false doctrine, and if God's not happy, he will wipe them out. That's why it's important we preach the truth. Uh -huh. No matter who it is, we preach the truth. Yes. Paul strongly denounced the Judaizers' perversion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said that he, even if an angel from heaven came preaching another message, that angel shall be cursed forever. If an angel came preaching, well, watch this. If an angel came preaching another message, he would not be from heaven. Right. 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 Hello? No matter how he looked. Because the Bible says, we were just talking about this, I think, Thursday night. You got to back it up with scripture. 1 Corinthians 1 14 15 says, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yep. Therefore, it is no great thing that his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who and shall be according to their works. Huh? we got to be careful. Yep. Amen. The devil will come in in sheep clothing. Yep. But inward, they're, they're raving wolves. Huh? Well, some of the things I heard yesterday just, oh, Lord, help us. Help us. Help people that are going down this path. Paul warns that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Here he, he invokes a curse on any angel who spreads a false teaching, a fitting response of an immersional of hell. Paul extended that curse to himself, even himself. Amen. His message must never change. Our message must never change. There is only one gospel. There is not another gospel. For the truth of the gospel never changes, church. Paul uses strong language because he was dealing with a life and death situation. That's why he had to repeat himself. Come on. Their souls are lost going to hell. And I thought just now, thank you, Holy Ghost, that Sister Alfie's grandson I don't know what his walk with the Lord, but I pray and I'm praying and believing through all of this. Through all of this that he looks to God. No matter what happens. Huh? You can lose some fingers. You can lose some arms. Huh? You'll get those back. Come on, amen. But to lose your soul. You'll never get it. That's eternity. You'll never get it back. Huh? That's why we must speak the truth. Come on. We don't know who's watching out there, but we must speak the truth to them. That's right. Huh? Yeah. You've got to know the truth. If you're living in sin, you got to do a about turn. Amen. Get out of that. Paul used strong language. Sometimes we as preachers, we got to be strong. Amen. We can't get under and sugarcoat it. 
because he was dealing with a life and death issue. Huh? Verse 10. He says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Paul was a men pleaser before conversion. Thank you, Brother Bob. You can give me the amen back here. Paul was a men pleaser before conversion. And a God pleaser since conversion. Hello? His purpose is to please God. That should be yours and I. Purpose is to please God. And therefore, he is not aiming to any way to gratify men. Paul's great object in view was now to please the Lord. Come on. Which means that he desired his favor rather than the favor of man. Come on. They can talk about me, Brother Vaughn, all they want. Behind my back. They can run me down all they want. But I'm not here to please them. I'm here to please God. For he is the one that I will answer to. You can't please men, folks. Men will let you down. People will let you down. But God is always there for you. He'll fight your battles for you. Here, Paul's great object in view was not to please, was now to please the Lord, which means he desired his favor rather than the favor of man. He acted with reverence to his will. In essence, Paul is saying, do I preach a man's doctrine or do I preach God's? Paul says, for yet, if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of God, of Christ. Meaning I cannot do both. Cannot please men and God at the same time. There's a lot of them out there who are trying to please men and please God at the same time. God is a jealous God. He don't like to share Either you give him all or none. Right. Amen. Amen. He said here, but Paul said, I yet please men. A Christian is not to expect to please men. True Christians must differ from the world. Yes. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. Their aims, feelings, and purposes must be unlike the world. Huh? We are to be peculiar people. I tell you what, I don't know who that lady was in the waiting room. Or that gentleman who sat across from us. But they got to see some really peculiar people. It wasn't, we were cussing, we were telling dirty jokes. We were having fun. We were being what Christians are to be. Have fun and still serve God. Amen. God had a good sense of humor. Don't believe me? Go look in the mirror. <laughs> huh? We are to be peculiar. Different. Yeah, it's not weird, but peculiar. And those folks, Brother Steve, saw some peculiar people. <laughs> and they enjoyed it. They didn't say, they didn't get up and say, I can't handle this. No, they laughed with us. They smiled with us. They talked with us. Come on, church. Why? Because they knew they were in good company. Yeah. We had the love of Christ. Yeah. Huh? And we should be willing to be esteemed as such to kill your people. All right. Last verse. Paul says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Verse 12. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
certify means to make known. Paul had not learned these great truths from human teachers, but by directed communion with God. Yes, amen. Even as the twelve had learned it from Jesus Christ's teaching, the way he received the message, the entirety of the new covenant, was totally different than that way men normally learn things, uh -huh. according to the things he says. The Judaizers or anyone who would seek to alter or change this gospel in any way must not be tolerated under any circumstances. Church, we must remember <coughs> the souls of men and women and children are at stake, which within itself tells us how significant this message is that we preach. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. In closing, I'd like to ask you this. Do you spend your life trying to please everybody? <coughs> Paul had to speak harshly to the Christians <laughs> in Galatia. Yes. Because they were in serious danger. He did not apologize, come on, for his straightforward words. He knew he could not serve Christ faithfully if he allowed the Galatian Christians to remain on the wrong track. Whose approval are you seeking? Other people's or God's? Pray for courage to put God's approval first. Huh? Don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Yes. Amen? Pray for the approval of God. Yes. I want to stand before him one of these days and hear, well done, yes. thy good and faithful servant. Yes. Sadly, I say this with, with a hurting heart. There's going to be many that's going to say, depart from me. They're going to hear those words, depart from me. As I said earlier, to be with Christ, they were removed. So they had to be with Christ to be removed. They believed in what Paul was teaching. But then all of a sudden, the sooner he leaves, the Judaizers comes in. And they try to change. you got to do this now. Come on. No, you don't. Amen. If this works, we don't know how much to do. And we don't even know if it's enough. They kept adding everything to it. They kept adding and adding and adding. What, they started out with just a few uh, laws, and they ended up with 800 and somebody, I think that's what it is, before it's all said and done. All we need is Jesus. Yeah. Come on. He'll, he'll take care of everything for you. Huh? We was asked just just last two days to pray about something. And we prayed. It was just between them and us. We prayed. He said, can you guys pray with us? Believe it. And we prayed and believed. <coughs> we kept praying. We kept praying. We kept praying. I'm not saying it was our prayers. But we kept praying. Amen. Come find out it came to pass. Huh? That's a God we serve. Amen. Amen. He'll take care of his children. Sometimes, come on, church, I've been there. Stepped out of the will of God. I've been there. But God never left me. He still takes care of situations. Why? Because he loves us. Yes. He knows. He knows how foolishness this pastor can be sometimes. Come on. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about myself. But he looks at me and says, I still love you, son. And I'm still working on you. He even began a good work on you. Come on. He's still working on us. I'm here to tell you there's only one gospel. That's Jesus Christ and crucified. 
All sin to become preaching another. Let them be accursed. Be damned. Huh? So if you hear something and you don't know it, you don't know it's true, check it out. Check it out for yourself. Make sure what, whoever it is, is your pastor, Brother Bond, Sister Meyer, Brother Bob, Sister Angela, it doesn't matter. Maybe Brother Tom, whatever's been preached and it don't line up, we need to check it out. Amen. Like I said earlier, I not, may not be the best preacher in the world, but I'm going to preach what God gives me. Right. And God is trying to tell the church world today, there's not another gospel. There's only one. Only one. And that's Jesus Christ. Heads of Bible and eyes closed. Christians, come back, please. Musicians, singers. Heavenly yes. Father, I thank you for your word that you've given to the Apostle Paul that he shared with us through the Holy Spirit. God, I do not want to be cursed. I don't want to be cursed. And Lord, I know I've done things in the past, dear Lord, that wasn't pleasing to you. And Lord, I'm asking you to help me lead me, guide me every day, dear Lord, to do what you want us to do. Let us be in your will, dear God, every day, each and every one of us. Lord, I've stepped out of your will several times, dear Lord. Dear Lord, did I ask you to help me? Lord, let me be what you want me to be. I'm not here to please men, but I'm here to please you. Lord, uh, again, dear God, we want to preach the truth behind this pulpit. Each man and each woman, each brother and each sister, dear God. Lord, that we preach and continue to preach the truth. That it goes out there in the airways. That there was somebody, we don't know who may be listening. We don't know who may be watching. Lord, I thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, dear God, for what you've done. Thank you, dear Lord, for what you're going to do. I thank you, Jesus. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You're here this morning, you say, Pastor, just to remember me in your prayers that I'll draw closer to the Lord to be in His will more. Just pray for me. Keep me, keep me in your prayers. Thank God for that hand. Anybody else? Thank God for the hand. I got my hand up. Thank God for those hands. It's going up. Lord, we want to be in your will. We want to be in your will. And we thank you this morning. As we sing this song that I sang earlier, I want you to find your place that you see here at the altar to thank the Lord for saving your soul. Just tell him every day, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for that price that you paid on the cross for me. And it's all by faith. Amen. Let's find us a place that we sing. When let me pray.
my Jesus Ridge, and I, we love you guys. You are our family. This church is our family. This church is our life. Serving the Lord, preaching the ministry, singing, working for Him. We're not here to please you. We're here to be a blessing to you. I'm here to please God. I'm here to please God. Amen. So remember Thursday night at 7 o'clock Bible study. Come be with us. I think we stopped at where? Verse 8 of chapter 19. Stop on verse 8. Or we start with verse 8. Start with verse 8. Uh, Acts 19 verse 8. So if you can be with us, be with us. Amen. Come out and be with us. Amen. We have a good time. And uh, learning the word. So come out and be with us. Group participation. Yep. Group participation. Amen. And uh, so uh, the last Saturday of this month, the 26th at 4 o'clock, rain or shine, the rains will be inside. We're going to have a, a, a hayride. Get together, bonfire outside the ring, and uh, fellowship together. And uh, mark that down on your calendars and come out and be a part of that. Amen. <laughs> All hearts and minds are here this morning. Anybody need prayer before we leave? All right, bow your heads with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you again this morning for another opportunity that we have to be able to come and worship you together. We ask you, dear Lord, again, to continue to move upon our prayer list. Meet every need. Save those that are lost. Save our children, dear Lord, grandchildren, our siblings, Lord, our family. God, move upon each and every situation, dear Lord. Continue to heal those, Sister Meyer, Sister Sandy, and Lord, we believe in it today. We thank you, dear Lord, for answering, answering a prayer, dear and Lord, you are an on-time God. Yes, you are. And we thank you, dear Lord. And God, we have prayed, dear Lord, for these preachers that's like the Judaizers preaching another gospel. Lord, that you get a hold of their hearts and minds. And God, that they preach the truth. The people sitting on and the, they're listening to God. Lord, that the, they'll hear the truth and the, the, the convicting power of the Holy Ghost will convict them. Dear Lord, to go and search, make sure what they're saying is true. If not, get out of there and find them a, a true gospel church. And Lord, I thank you for those that's going to come. I thank you for those that's coming to our church. Yes, Lord. Lord, as you, uh, uh, was, the word was given to us uh, through an individual, dear Lord, that spoke us and Lord laid upon their heart that not to uh, despise the small beginnings. But you're an on-time God. And your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. Lord, but we're going to continue to trust in you and believe in you. And God, as we depart into our separate ways, we ask you one more time. Watch over us, protect us, bring us back. Thursday night, believe it. We'll give you all praise. We'll give you all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. And amen. Shake hands.